Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric exponential equation with I. So you've got pretty much everything. Maybe not everything but a lot of things. So we have cosine of e to the power z equals I and we're going to be solving for z values. Now quick question, z can be written as A plus BI and that's also the name of this channel, right? You hopefully know that. So do you think replacing z with a plus bi is going to help us with this problem? And you can definitely test it out. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Cosine of e to the power a plus bi is equal to i. How do you find the cosine of a complex exponential, right? I mean, how do you find the cosine of a complex number in the first place. Like if I were given, what is cosine of 1 plus i, right? How would you find it? So, in order to be able to write something for this, we're going to be using Euler's formulas. Or Euler's formula, actually. But we're going to use it in two different versions. So the first one is going to be e to the power ix equals cosine x plus i sine x. This is amazing because you can replace x with pi and get negative 1 or you can replace x with pi over 2 and get i or some other values so it's it's interesting it's amazing it's just mind-blowing how he could come up with something like this but this can be proven easily with I think Taylor's theorem or Taylor's series but that's not what we're gonna do we're going to modify this by replacing x with negative x that's gonna give us the negative exponent and of course since cosine is an even function cosine of negative x is going to be the same as cosine of x but sine of negative x is going to be the opposite of sine of x make sense so we're going to get that, get a different expression obviously they're not the same thing right and from here we can do something awesome just by adding these two things we get rid of the sine x and we end up with an expression for cosine of x let's go ahead and add uh, side by side putting this on the left hand side so 2 cosine x equals e to the ix plus e to the negative ix you could also use hyperbolic functions but I don't like them so I mean it's just a matter of taste right I mean they're useful anyways but this is gonna be the value of cosine x written using Euler's formula and this is just amazing because it uses exponents so you can pretty much get any value for cosine remember what they've been telling us Cosine of an angle must be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Yes, that's true for real numbers, but in the complex world, it can be anything you want. Okay? Anyways, so this is cosine x, and what do we want? We want cosine of e to the power z. Wow, we're going to take it to an exponential level. So what we need to do is just replace x with e to the power z. And that's all we have to do, right? And then set it equal to something. What are we going to set it equal to? I. But I can be replaced, and we can hopefully get something nice from here. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Cosine of e to the z is e to the i e to the z plus e to the negative i e to the z divided by 2, and we're going to set it equal to i. Okay? Now, how do you solve for z? This, this, this kind of looks complicated. But let's go ahead and simplify these things. How about calling this something else? Since this is a complex number, let's call that W. Just another complex number, right? This is going to be the reciprocal of W because it has a negative exponent. So we can write this as W plus 1 over W and multiply both sides by 2. That's going to give us 2i. Great. Now, you add a number and it's reciprocal and you get 2i. How nice is that? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to solve this as a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by w. w squared plus 1 equals 2iw. And then bring the 2iw to the left and write this as w squared minus 2iw plus 1 equals 0. Now, one of the really cool things you can do is use the quadratic formula, but that's not interesting enough. Let's go ahead and use something else. Subtract 1 from both sides. You're going to get this. And then add i squared to both sides. Because guess what? That's going to give you 
A perfect square on the left hand side. Isn't that perfect? This is W minus I squared. And the right hand side is negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. Awesome. Now we're going to take square roots and find W from here, right? Remember though, with complex numbers, there are two square roots. And negative 2 can basically be written as 2 times e to the power pi i. And when you find the first square root, it's going to be half of pi. So we can write this as w minus i equals the square root of 2 times e to the power pi i over 2. By the way, you could also write it as i pi, but pi i and i pi are the same. This is just one of the square roots. And the other square root is just going to be, you're going to be adding pi to this, and it's just going to give you the pi over, you can add pi to pi over 2. That's going to give you 3 pi over 2 with the same modulus, e to the power 3 pi I over 2. You could also just negate this because that's what the square roots are. They're opposites, okay? In the real world and complex world too, but complex world is different. In the real world, we only have a one positive principal square root. Okay, so those are going to be the values of W minus I, but we're supposed to find W. And not only that, we have to kind of go something, uh, go somewhere from there. What is this number? What is pi i over 2, e to the power pi i over So the argument here is pi over 2, and, and the modulus is root 2. So you're basically looking at root 2 times i. This is root 2i. Make sense? Because i has a modulus, I mean an argument of pi over 2. This is i, right? This is just i. And root 2i is just going to be that times root 2. So from here we can find w easily. w is going to be 1 plus root 2 all multiplied by i. This is going to be negative i because remember what we said, the square roots are going to be opposites. So when we add the 1 i, it's going to be 1 minus root 2 times i. So there are two w's and we're going to set the w equal to what? e to the power i e to the power z. e to the power i e to the z is w. So since w is 1 plus root 2i, let's go ahead and just write it as is. Uh, and e to the power i e to the z is going to be 1 plus root 2i. And then we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides, bring these down. Let me go ahead and work with one of them because the other one is going to be so similar. But here's the challenge. We have a challenge here to express this in polar form. Do we know the argument? We don't. So here's what we're going to do. This is in the first quadrant, right? You agree with that? Because, wait a minute, it's not even in the first quadrant. Wait a minute, what am I talking about? This is a multiple of i, but that's a positive multiple of i. So yes, it has an argument of pi over 2. So I can, yes, write it easily. So here's how. The modulus of this number is 1 plus root 2, and i got to multiply it by e to the power i pi over 2. And of course, you're supposed to add multiples of something. So in general form, this can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. I keep saying this all the time, but hopefully you recognize that, right, as an integer. And now we have a really nice expression. We have a complex exponential, and then we have a real part, which is the modulus. And now we can go ahead and natural log both sides. Bring everything down. Let's move this stuff a little bit. Oops. I did need another tool, apparently. Can we move the whole thing? Yeah, I guess. Like this, maybe. This much. Okay, that's good. And now let's go ahead and natural log both sides with the ln, a huge ln, okay? Now, this is going to be i e to the z. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to get ln 1 plus root 2 plus when you ln e to the power of something, it's going to be that because if you log a product, it's going to turn into the sum of two logs. So it's going to be i pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. It's kind of funny, right? This is the comp uh, imaginary part, but now when you divide by i, that's going to be the real part. But we're not going to divide by i. You know why? Because we're going to multiply by negative i because it's more fun. Let's go ahead and do it. Multiply by negative i. And then negative i squared is positive 1, so it's going to give me e to the z. This is going to become negative i something, but 
again, I'm going to get a negative i squared, which is positive 1. So let's go ahead and write that first, that pi thingy. And then we're going to get minus i times ln 1 plus root 2. Awesome. This is the crazy part of it, which I'm probably going to leave with you. This is a complex number in standard form. How do you find z from here? You have to natural log both sides one more time, but you have to be able to write this number in polar form. <laughs> Guess what? Here's what it's going to look like. Looking at the values, I can tell, hopefully n is positive. Let's just take n equals uh, 0, can we? Because that's going to simplify things a little bit, and then we can kind of just focus on the imaginary part, which is more fun. And that's just going to be i times ln. So uh, ln 1 plus root 2 obviously is going to be positive. So our number is going to be in the fourth quadrant. Think about it. Positive x and negative y. So something like this, okay? So its tangent is supposed to be a negative value. But when I do the inverse 10, I'm supposed to use an angle between negative pi and pi, right? Or is it 0 and pi? Anyways, hopefully you get the idea. But here's what you can do. You can divide this number by that number using the negative sign. So tangent theta is just going to be negative ln 1 plus root 2 over pi over 2. From here, you can find theta by inverse tangenting and then using, uh, I think, uh, another sign for this. And then natural log buses. But I'm going to leave it at that point. At least we found e to the power z. Hopefully you can find z from here. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.